everyone happy new year i'm going to take a look at the english premier league pack that was recently released on eFootball. i'll also be doing reviews for the italian and spanish league packs they'll be coming up hopefully over the course of this week as for this pack as always i'll put timestamps in the description for each player so if there's a particular player you want to hear about click the description and there'll be a link to take you straight to that player so i'll start with the lowest rated based on their maximum overall rating so We've got Veltman from Brighton. So this guy is a defensive fullback. There aren't many good defensive fullbacks around. So if you play with defensive fullbacks, this guy might be interesting to you. When you look at the attributes based on the auto allocation, he's pretty solid. He's, he's strong defensively. He's okay down the left. The one area where he's maybe a little bit concerning is the pace. He's not particularly quick. So I personally would be looking to reallocate some points. So I could maybe take you could take them from defending. Maybe take that down to four. That frees some points up. And you get an extra two on speed. You've already got 12 on there with the auto allocation. So with these being in, they, they go in four. So the first four, one point. The next four, two points. The next four, three points. The next two increases on here after 12. Only four points each. That's expensive. So even putting eight, putting eight, eight extra points on the lower body, you only get two, an increase of two. So it's a tough one. Do you take a lot of points from elsewhere to try and get a bit of extra speed on him? I think it's probably worth it to a point, but I don't know. I, I think to be honest, that's about as far as I'll go. Uh, 85 is not bad for speed, but then the acceleration is not brilliant. So you could maybe take some physical contact the way you don't need that 78. Take four off there. And then... Give him a bit of acceleration at least. So then still, you know, it's not brilliant pace still. It's a bit better though. It's passable. And with the game plan boost, you see here, you can preview it with this button. It's, it's not bad. Decent pace. It's pretty strong defensively. Again, he's okay down the left. I think it's an okay defensive right back. It's not a brilliant one. Uh, I think a lot of people will have better options. But if you do like defensive fullbacks, and if you don't have uh, too many options there, it could be worth picking up. Um... The other thing that I'll just quickly show you with this guy with Veltman, he can play right midfield based on a position chart, but you can't make him particularly good as a right midfielder. But what you can do is you can also make him a centre-back. If you train him a centre-back, I'll just do the use this button here. I normally do it myself, but as you can see, you can actually make him a pretty solid centre-back. Those defensive attributes down the middle look very nice, especially with the game plan boost. They'll all go over the 90 mark. Oh. I was clicking the wrong thing there, you see. Um, pace is okay for a centre-back. It's decent. The jumping and physical are okay. He's about six foot tall, so he's not the tall. He's not going to be outstanding as a centre-back, but he, like he, as you can see with those attributes, he is pretty good, and especially for a centre-back down the left now. Because he's normally a full-back, he's pretty good for a centre-back now down that left column. If you look at the skills, interception, sliding tackle, good at full-back, but as a centre-back, a little bit lacking you're looking for man marking you're certainly going to look for aerial superiority for a guy who's six foot tall so he's lacking aerial superiority and maybe he's heading as well and as i say man marking blocker acrobatic clearance you probably want to put a few skills on him if you really want to make him a center back but if you're going to get this guy and you're planning to use him quite a bit as a center back i think it would be worth putting those skills on him. i think it's, especially if you're a brighton fan you're probably going to be very keen to pick this guy up i think as a center back that's where i would be you get the most value out of him if you get this card and it'll be worth putting those skills on him to really get the best out of him. But yeah, you've got those two options. As a centre-back, if you put those skills in him, it could be a really good centre-back. Uh, and as a right-back, not amazing, but certainly, just to go back to the auto allocation there, depending how you build him. Hang on, that's just done the centre-back build again. There. Depending how you build him, how you tweak the allocation of his training points, could be a pretty solid option at right-back. Not an amazing one, but... Again, defensive fullback, there aren't too many options around. So it could be one as well worth picking up. So yeah, a couple of ways you could use this guy, but maybe he's a slightly better card than a lot of people might realize. Uh, next up, the other fullback in the pack, we've got Luca Dean. So with this guy, it's pretty straightforward. He's only got one position he can play, which is left back. And he's pretty much just okay everywhere, really. He's not really outstanding anywhere. His pace is, is decent enough. He's got pretty decent balance. Physical contact's okay. That'll hit the 70 mark and with a game plan boost if you've got a good enough manager. Stamina's pretty good. He's okay defensively. He's okay on the ball. The one good thing he's got really is lofted pass. His crossing is going to be really nice. 86 lofted pass. He looked down at the skills. He's got soul control, which is nice for a fullback. 
pinpoint crossing, low lofted pass. So his crossing and his lofted passing is going to be very good. So that's one big strength he's got. And then defensively down here, you see he's got interception. He's got starting tackle at the bottom. He's also got aerial superiority. So he's got what he needs with interception, the most important one. But aerial superiority, he's not the tallest at 178, but he's got 83 for jumping. So aerial superiority and 83 for jumping. That, that, that's quite rare for a fullback to be as good in the air as that. So it's something to keep in mind as well. So yeah, in, in most areas, he's okay. The crossing is going to be pretty good. And that aerial superiority is a nice little bonus there. So he's not amazing really in any area. He's not he's not one I'd look at and be particularly excited to pick up. But if you're lacking left back options, and certainly for Villa fans especially, he's a pretty tidy attacking left back option. And then we've got our goalie. We've got Sanchez from Chelsea. So again, a pretty solid option. Nothing amazing. Um, with the auto allocation. I have one concern really, and that's it's not jumping for once because for some reason, as much as they give all these trending goalkeepers terrible jumping, when it's the ones you can train, the jumping apparently is not an issue and they can jump. Uh, I don't know what Konami are thinking with keepers, but yeah, the one thing that does concern me is goalkeeper awareness. Uh, 84 for goalkeeper awareness and a five-star card. That concerns me. I've got three-star keepers with better awareness than that. So I'm going to look straight over here at his points and think, I'm going to have a think about where I can reallocate points. So if Konami think that some of the best performing goalkeepers of recent weeks and months can have jumping in the 60s, we obviously don't need a jumping to be so high. So we'll take those points back from Ariel. Um, if I'm going to work on the assumption that I've got a good enough manager for a game plan boost of two on everything, I can take two off there. And then he's still going to hit 90 for reflexes. That frees up eight points. So what does that give us an awareness? We've got two points spare. Uh, let's take a couple away from there. Another one on... Another two on there. Yeah, I would do that. Because now, if we get that game plan boost, see, awareness and reflex is both 90. I think that's a big difference. The catching and parrying might not be brilliant, but they hit the 80 mark. Reach at 84. For a guy who's six foot five, yeah, he's just over six foot five. He's a tall guy. So 84 reach is actually reasonable and jumping now 69. Obviously you've gone below 70. That's a bit dodgy, but like I say, if Konami think that's okay on, on some of the best performing keepers and their player of the week and player of the month packs. And for a guy who's six foot five, especially I can live with that. The awareness and reflex is hitting 90 is big for me. So yeah, that's with the game plan boost, taking that back off. That's obviously the core stats and you can build them as you like. You can go with the auto allocation, but I would personally do that. And as much as he's not a, an elite level keeper by any means, I think he's certainly a pretty solid option. So yeah, not a bad keeper, this. Then we have Sangare. So a lot of people like this guy, uh, even just his base card. And I think this is the first time we've had a feature version. So he's a defensive midfielder, he's a destroyer. And as you can see, he's very much defensively orient defensive oriented. He's got very good defensive attributes down there. Strong physical contact, stamina is pretty decent. Pace is pretty average. He's a tall, powerful guy, six foot three. So you can't expect too much in terms of the balance and, and the dribbling, but you will have to keep that in mind. Don't ask too much from on the ball because he might he won't be the most maneuverable player, or the most responsive. Uh, down the left, it depends. Everyone's different. A, a lot of people, I would say, most of my friends who play this game are happy with that on a defensive midfielder. Personally, I'm not. I don't want anyone in this area in front of my defence being clumsy on the ball, playing dodgy passes, giving the ball away in those areas, that scares me. So I always have to get some of these attributes up into the 80s. Um, we'll have a look at his skills first, and then I'll see if it's worth retraining him. But looking at the skills, long range shooting, I don't think that's really relevant for a defensive midfielder. One touch pass, load off the pass, so that will improve his passing. That's good. Man marking, interception, fighting spirit, aerial superiority, blocker, styling tackle. You've got a great selection of skills for a defensive midfielder. That's really good. So he's he's well built, very well built to be a defensive midfielder. He can play centre midfield as well. I'm not sure you'd want to put him there because you'd have to really reallocate a lot of points. We'll have a look anyways. So if you're going to play centre mid as a kind of box-to-box -box type of midfielder, let's just see if we reallocate all these points. Try and make them a bit better technically. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure it's worth doing that. You get a, a pretty average midfield if you do that. We'll go with the defensive midfield. As I say, uh, I'm not personally comfortable with that left-hand column. I think most people probably would be, would just focus on the defensive, just put them in front of the defense and have them protect the defense, focus on the defensive attributes, and that'd be fine for a lot of people. But if you're like me, and if you like a bit more on your technical attributes, you can take a bit off the defensive, 
Uh, stick that on there. Do, 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 that on there. That would probably do it, to be honest. Uh, especially bearing in mind he's got one touch pass, low lofted pass. He's got nice passing skills to go with the, what's now 82 for low pass, 81 lofted pass. On the ball, he's a bit tidier. You hit that game plan boost with a good enough manager. Even it makes him even better. So, yeah, I, he's he's not an elite level player. He's not a top top defensive midfielder like some of the the best defensive midfielders in the game by any means. But certainly, he's a pretty strong one. Um, it may sound like a lazy comparison, but he is of the ilk of the of kind of you know players like Vieira, Zakaria, those big, tall, powerful, physically imposing defensive midfielders. He's he's physically and in terms of his attributes as well, technical attributes and everything. He's, he's of that mold uh, with the skill set and and uh, the strength of these attributes defensively and the rest. Are, I think he's on the whole. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good card. Not an amazing one, but it uh, could be a very effective one. Then we have Jared Bowen. So I've got a player of the week version of Bowen, which is also 93 rated. That's the highest this guy can get to with the auto allocation here. You see 93. Uh, only difference, obvious difference for me is that my player of the week one's whole player. This is a roaming flank. So if you play this guy wide right, he'll he'll kind of roam around into some interesting positions in central areas as well as out wide. Um, if you play him as an SS, he'll probably play more like a whole player to be honest. Um, high offensive awareness should make should see him making a lot of good making a, a lot of good attacking runs. He's not really amazing in any area. Um, I've not really use this player of the week card too much i only really use it sometimes in the english league challenge because there's nothing particularly amazing about him he's got decent pace he's got good balance and stamina is very good but on the ball he's all right passing not brilliant finishing decent there's just nothing really that stands out about bowen to be honest um i don't think it'd be really worth reallocating points either because you know you see here he's got eight on all of these important ones he's got four on shooting i think that's okay if you're going to start taking points from one and moving them to another you free up a couple of points here and there. You'd have to take two off one just to increase another one by one. I don't think it's really worth it. So I'll probably leave him built the way he is. Um, looking at the skills down here, the important ones, first time shot, pinpoint crossing, that's about it. There's no one touch pass, no through passing, no long range shooting, no long range curler. A bit lacking in skills, nothing too amazing with the attributes. If you pick this guy up, I think especially West Ham fans will, will want to pick this guy up as a good version of Bowen. I would look to put some skills on him. I think the obvious ones, like I mentioned, like one-touch pass and through passing, uh, long-range drive, especially if you kind of play him on the right-hand side, cutting in onto his left foot. I think it would be worth adding those skills to make him more effective. As it is, it's a decent card, but I don't think it's a particularly amazing one. So for me personally, it's not one to get too excited about. However, we've got a couple of players coming up now um, who I do like the look of. I think a lot of people like the look, like the look of this guy, Eze. So Eze's a... He's a fun player to use. He's really good on the ball. As you can see here, he's great at dribbling. He's got some skill moves down here. See all this dribbly stuff here for the skill merchants. In terms of end product, I mean, acrobatic finishing, pinpoint crossing, that's about it really. Outside curve is a nice one. He's another one like Bowen. If you're going to get this guy and use him, you're going to want to look, put some skills on him. I think especially one touch pass and through passing. If you play him as an attacking midfielder particularly, which is his registered position. Um... There have been a couple of player of the week versions of Eze which have been really good. Uh, I've not had either myself, unfortunately. I wanted them. Uh, I've used them in co-op when other people have, had, have brought them along in co-op. They're very, very nice cards. They're fun to use. The, the benefit of this card over those player of the week cards is that you can put skills on them. So like I say, you can put one touch pass, through passing, long range shooting. If you get this guy, you're going to use him a lot. I think it's worth putting those skills on him. He's a fun player to use. He's really nice. Um, with the auto allocation here, I think it's around about near enough right for attack midfield. I think the one concern for me is I'd like that low pass to be higher. So personally, I would probably get rid of a few from finishing. I'll take all of them, all them off finishing actually because the game plan boost will take it past 70. That gives you one extra on passing. Again, with that game plan boost, if you took two off dribbling, you'll still go past the 90 mark in the game plan. So that frees up seven points. So we can put two more on passing. And there's one left over, so we'll just nudge to sh finishing up to 70. I think that's what I'd personally do. If I'm going to play this guy as an attack midfielder, that's what I'd do because you need that low pass to be high in that in that part of the pitch. It's very important. Uh, he's a whole player, so if you play him as an attack midfielder, that's a really nice play style. He'll be making a lot of, a lot of runs forward into good positions. Um, yeah, really nice card at AMF. He's going to be really nice in the ball. He's got quite a low center of gravity, 173. Good balance, great dribbling, passing is better now. Um, 
as I mentioned, if you preview the game plan boost with a good manager, the speed will hit 80. Low and lofty pass, both in the 80s, he's going to be really, really nice. He's going to feel great on the ball, super responsive. He's a really neat little player. Um, you can play, play him wide left as well. If you play him left midfield, whole player will still be his active playing style. He'll be making some nice attacking runs into spaces. Uh, as a wide forward on the left, he won't be a whole player anymore, but he'll probably play more like a prolific winger. If you do play him down the left, personally, I would want a bit more speed on him. So what I would do is oh, I'd probably nudge another one off his dribbling. I don't think passing is quite so important if he's playing wide left, so I'll take those off him. That one back off shooting as well. We'll get his speed up to 82. And then we've got four left. Where are we going to put those four? Mm, probably just put two back on dribbling and a couple on finishing. I think that's what I personally would do if I was going to play wide left for me. So again, with that game plan boost, he's still going to be in the 90s and all of his technique there. His balance and his acceleration. He's got a bit more speed about him now though. He's still got good awareness and his passing is still good enough playing wide left. Yeah, I like the look of this card a lot. I think it's nice. I think the, the lack of skills regarding his end product, that's the one concern for me. But if I get this card, which I plan to, I will be putting skills on him, hopefully getting him one-touch pass and through passing. I think he's a really, really neat player to play attack midfield, and he can be very effective wide left as well. As I say, it might depend how you build him. I think personally you need a bit more speed to play wide left like I've done there. But if you go back to the auto allocation, certainly as an attack midfielder, that's a great build. He's going to be really, really good on the ball. So yeah, for me, that's a really good card. But like I say, a couple of players coming up. And the other one is Tresor. And Tresor is actually very similar to Aze. So looking at the attributes, again, you know, the speed isn't amazing. But it's decent enough. But the acceleration is really good. The balance is good. And he's really good on the ball. Uh, he's not got brilliant passing. So like I say, it's a, it's a similar situation to Aze. Really. He's not got the offensive awareness of Aze. That's the one real weakness compared to Aze. But if you look down at the skills, one touch pass through passing. So he has those skills that Aze doesn't. So... A lot of similarities. The way, the way they're built, this guy's going to be really good at dribbling. He's got some skill stuff down here. He's got that passing, as I mentioned. Him and Aze both have pinpoint crossing. And both of them can play through through the middle or wide left. I don't think Tracer's passing is good enough, really, to get away with playing AMF. Um, you could increase it. As you can see, they've, you've only got four, uh, an increase of four, based on the auto allocation on his passing. If you were to maybe take a few away from dribbling, you could take a few off shooting. And you can get his passing right up. So you could play him as an attack in the field. You can quite easily rebuild him, reallocate some training points, and get him, get him pretty capable, I think, of, of playing attack in the field. If you went with that auto allocation, no back to the way he was built originally, I think as a wide left player, which is his registered position, that's obviously why his training points have been allocated this way. I think he'd be really effective. Like I say, the acceleration, the balance, and the dribbling is going to be really, really good in the ball. He's going to be responsive, maneuverable. 172. So again, virtually the same height as Eze. He's got that low center of gravity. He's going to feel very neat and responsive on the ball. Wide left, I think the passing is okay. You could play him SS as well. Um, SS, I think I'd probably want a bit more on his passing. So again, uh, I wouldn't want to take those points off shooting if he's an SS. Maybe just take one or two off his dribbling. And then gets passing up a bit. Maybe I'll do that. We'll just notice there's one down there on defending. We don't need that. So we put another one on passing. There you go. Lovely. So yeah, whichever way you tweak his his, uh, his training points, like I say, I think it's uh, I, I don't want to keep comparing them to Eze, but they are very similar positionally in the, the balancing of the attributes. This guy, I think a lot of people look at Eze and think he's the best in the pack, but I think this guy is on the same level as Eze. I think he's a very similar player, and I personally, I plan to probably spin this pack, and if I spin this pack, Eze and Tracer are the two players I want. I want both these guys. He looks like he's going to be really fun on the ball. Bit of end product, a really neat player to use, and he's got that versatility where he can play wide left and through the middle. So, yeah, for me, this is a much like as a very similar card, and I think it's a very good card. And then we have Kovacic. So, this one's interesting. So, he's down as a centre midfielder, box to box. And what you want from a box to box centre midfielder, you basically want a bit of everything. But what you've got with Kovacic is fantastic on the ball, fantastic passing, but really poor offensive awareness and then defensively his defensive awareness and tackling are both really poor as well so he's not got everything can we bounce it out a bit if we take that passing right down maybe take it all the way down there if you take the dribbling all the way down to there how much can we add to his defensive and to his offensive awareness so an extra four on dexterity and then how far can we get defensives up that's what we can do is that good enough i think probably it is 
it's a pretty good all-round centre midfield. It's not an amazing one. Still, the tackling at 71 is not great. Um, on the ball is still very good. Offensive awareness is a bit better. But yeah, tackling is not great. And even defensive awareness isn't brilliant. Pretty good pace for a centre midfielder. Physical contact is not great for a centre mid. Balance is great. Stamina is not great. He's going to get tired. It's not disastrously bad, but 84. I, you want high 80s stamina on a centre mid box to box, really. If you look down the skills here, he's got a bit of everything. You see he's got the heel tricks, a nice one, but one touch pass, man marking interception. So skill-wise, he's got a bit of everything. And in terms of his attributes, he kind of got a bit of everything. But he's just lacking a little bit in a few areas, and that tackling especially. So yes, it's a good centre midfielder. Um, but I'm looking at the other positions thinking, can we get more out of him? Could you, can you get more value out of this guy in another position? So if we look at defensive midfield first, uh, leave the passing there. Take that one off finishing. It's not going to much difference. Dribbling doesn't mean to be so high for a defensive mid. We can take all those points off. It's still good enough. We need to make him better defensively to play in that position. Um, dexterity is not so important anymore. Could take all of that off, to be honest. Um, stamina is not going to be too important playing defensive mid. So we need some more aerial. Get that up to there. So if we get the aerial, so we'll get his physical contact to 68. That will hit 70 with a game plan boost. And then we've got four points left. So one more defensive. So as a defensive midfielder, as an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder, that's, that's a flat no from me. Uh, tackling still nowhere near good enough. Defensive awareness is not great. Physical contact is better, but still not great. Um, I think the only way I play him in that position defensive mid is if you've already got a, maybe he's an anchor man or destroyer, um, someone like a Sangare who's going to sit in front of the defense, do the defensive work, and then you could use Kovacic as kind of like a deep line playmaker type of type of player. He could do a job for you then be quite good, but I don't think he'd be amazing. I don't think he I don't think that's really the way to get the best value out of this card. So that leaves one position which is attacking midfield. So take all these points back from defending an aerial and we'll start piling them onto the more offensive attributes. And as you're gonna see, we're gonna be in business. So there you go. For me, personally, that is the best way to build this card. I would use him as an attacking midfielder. And with this this way of uh, training him, on the ball, all 90s, low pass 90. Offensive awareness is still not brilliant, but it's much better at 75. Pace is good for an attacking midfielder. Balance 93 is great. Stamina 84 is okay, not brilliant, but it could be worse. For me, I would if I pick this guy up, I would train him like this. I would play him attack midfield, and I would put through passing on him. And if you can do that, you give this guy through passing and you train him this way and use him attack midfield, I think you've got a brilliant card with the dribbling, with the passing, the balance, and good pace as well. I think this guy could be a really, really good attack midfielder. So there are different ways you can use him. Like I say, you could get away than defensive midfield. I still I still don't think he's brilliant in that position. As a centre midfield, he's got one or two flaws. But I think to get the best value you possibly can out of this card, I think this is the way to use him. Attack him midfield, train him similar to this. Given through passing, I think he could be a really, really good attacking midfielder. So it's an interesting card, but I think that's the way you get the best value out of him. He could be a really good attacking midfielder. Then we have Hoyland from Man United. So we've got a striker, goal poacher, and he's a pacey goal poacher. Most pacey goal poachers tend to be a bit shorter and a bit more kind of technically able. But with this guy, you've got height, six foot three. And you've got some power on him, that physical presence, 84 physical contact. So he's an interesting one. He's a little bit different. Um, the awareness is good at 88. The pace is obviously good. And that physical contact, as I just said, is quite good. But finishing 83 is not brilliant. So I would look to maybe reallocate a few other points. Um, I think really what this comes down to is there's two ways you can use him. If you look down at the skill set, first time shot, the most important one. He's got acrobatic finishing, which is nice. Outside of that, it, 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 what I'm looking for is heading and aerial superiority. On a striker with six foot three with good physical contact, I'm thinking great. He's going to be good from crosses, he'll be good in the air. But without heading and aerial superiority, he is going to be lacking because his jumping is only 68. So I think what it comes down to is two ways you can use him. If you want to make him good in the air, you're going to have to kind of tweak his the the, the balancing of his attributes and get his jumping up a little bit, and you're going to want to put heading and aerial superiority skills onto him. If you do that, you could have a good sort of all rounder who's going to be dangerous from crosses. But I think really, bearing in mind not everyone has the skill trainers to, to do that, to get those skills on him, and the fact that his jumping is not quite so high, I personally would ignore the fact that he's tall and powerful and just focus on the fact he's a pacey goal poacher, in which case you've got to get the finishing up. So I'll take away those aerial points. 
Uh, that one on passing is not really necessary. We can get one on his shooting there. Um, I would take one away from his speed or two. Or just one. Hang on. Yeah, just one. I would I would do that personally. So now he's still got enough speed there. Still got great acceleration. Physical contact still hits 80. Offensive wins at 88 is still good. Um, finishing 85 though. And if you hit that game plan boost there, you see offensive wins is 90, which is very nice. So I would personally do that. Uh, as I often say with strikers, I would like him to be better on the ball. Um, you could maybe take a bit away from somewhere else. You could sacrifice a bit of dexterity, put a bit more on his technique there. You've got another two points left. There's no way to put them. Maybe another one on dribbling. And then, as you see with that game plan boost, you can get him up into the 80s for ball control and dribbling. Personally, I would do that. I like my strikers to be a bit more comfortable on the ball. Sometimes when you feed the ball into your striker, you've got to take a touch and hold onto the ball for a, for a minute and... If you're not in the 80s in these attributes, it makes it a lot easier for defenders to dispossess you, but it, it depends how you want to do it. Uh, a lot of people aren't too bothered about those technicals there on a striker. They just want the pace, the awareness, and the finishing, and this guy's certainly got them. So I think especially if you're a Man United fan, you're certainly going to want this guy. It's the best version of Hoyland that we've had. Um, but for other people, if you get this guy, I think he could be effective. Just uh, He's not going to be quite as good in the as you might want someone of his physical stature to be, and he's a little bit... A little bit lacking technically in my opinion, but depending on how you use him, I think he could be a very effective striker though. He's uh he's a big, tall, powerful, but most importantly pacey goal poacher. So yeah, could be an effective one. Pretty good card. Then we have our only centre back Conate from Liverpool. So that generally you get two types of centre back. You get the ones with a bit of pace and a bit of a uh, maneuverability about them, like Marquinhos, like the legendary Tomiyasu we had, Brazy, that type of centre back. And then you get the other type of centre back, and that's what this guy is. 194 centimeters, so he's about six foot four, six foot five, 95 kilograms. He's a big dude. Physical contact's 93. He's a big, tall, powerful, physically imposing centre back. As you'd expect from that type of centre back, he's not the quickest. He's not going to be the most responsive or most manoeuvrable. But if you're okay with that, you like your centre backs to just be tall and powerful. This guy's great. You see with the defensives, he's very strong there. As I mentioned, physical contact's high. The jumping is the one attribute where he's a little bit lacking. He is very tall, though, and he does have aerial superiority. So he's not going to be bad in the air. He's just not going to be amazing. He'll be pretty solid in the air. Doesn't have heading, though. That might be a concern. Um, and in terms of the important ones for a centre-back, interception and man marking. He's got acrobatic clearance as well, sliding tackle. The one he's lacking is blocker. There are quite a lot of centre-backs who lack blocker, but it's a, it's a pretty important skill. So you might want to put blocker on him if you get this guy, you plan to use him. I would say block is the one skill, the first skill I'll be looking to put on him. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'll too much, do too much with the allocation of his training points. You could take one of defending. If you work on the basis of his game plan boost, giving a, a boost of two on everything, you could do that. You're still going to hit 90 plus on all those defensives, as you can see. But then we freed up a few points. Um, put one on the aerial there. And then I think if we just look with, with the game plan boost, I'd be tempted to... Try and get his dexterity up there. Yeah, I would probably do that. Just nudge one off his lower body strength. And then we can get his dexterity high enough so that with the game plan boost, we get 70 for acceleration. So, yeah, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference, but I think that's what I'll do personally. I would allocate his points like that. So we get the jumping up to 80. I think that's important. Speed and acceleration, both now 70 plus. All those defenses still hitting the 90 mark. His passing is pretty decent for centre-back as well. So, yeah, I think on the whole... I'll be looking to get the blocker skill on him if I if I was going to get this guy and use him. But uh, yeah, outside of that, I think what you got is a big, powerful, uh, and ultimately very good centre-back. So yeah, it's a good card, that. And finally, we've got James Madison. So we've got three ways we can use this guy. Um, first off, we'll rule out centre midfield. He can't defend. He's not going to play centre midfield. It's just a waste of all his attributes, his strengths. He's either an attacking midfielder or he can play wide left or wide right. Starting with attacking midfield with the auto allocation, I wouldn't tweak much. I think the way his, his points are allocated is fine. Good good offensive awareness. He's great on the ball. He's got great passing. Finishing's okay. The only real weakness is his speed's a bit low. I don't think for a creative playmaker playing attacking midfield, I don't think speed's too important. He's not going to be bursting beyond the defense. He's not going to be making a lot of runs, you know, overlapping, getting behind defenders. He's mainly going to be holding back and just kind of you know, moving around in these areas, just looking to get on the ball and play make, uh, you know, create chances for players up ahead of him. So I don't think speed's too important, um, but that might be a concern for you. It just depends on how you play the game, but acceleration is decent. 
balance is great at 90. Stamina could be better, but it's not disastrous. Yeah, as an attack midfield, like I say, I would leave it pretty much as it is. I think that's great. But the other two ways you can use him, if you use him wide left, you could probably take a bit off his passing, um, maybe one off his dribbling. And if you just nudge his speed up a bit, how high can we get his speed? Uh, in fact, you take a bit more off his dribbling, maybe. If you do that with the game plan boost, you get to the 80 mark for speed, acceleration, decent. Great, great kicking power, by the way. Um, balance is great, stamina. Still great on the ball and with his passing as well. I think he could be a pretty effective player wide left. Uh, he's not the quickest for a, a white for a winger. Uh, he's not exactly a skill merchant. He's not got a lot of uh, kind of skill moves and stuff. So the, the, the dribblers aren't going to be too keen, I don't think, to play him wide left. But if you like a wide left player, he's going to have an end product. He's going to be technically very tidy and be able to cut inside and shoot and pass. I think, it, I think if you built him similar to this, he could be very effective wide left. Uh, looking at these skills, um, he does have long range drive. So if you're cutting in from the left onto his right foot, important skill to have. Dipping shot, acrobatic finishing, nice. The, the important ones though, one touch pass, through passing, weighted pass. Got pinpoint crossing as well. We'll come back to that in a moment. But the one touch pass and through pass are the key ones. So nice and wide left. But if you're going with the auto allocation, if you're going to play him as an attack midfielder, one touch pass and through passing, brilliant. But I mentioned pinpoint crossing. The other way you can use this guy, you can use him wide right. Speed will be important there if you're going to play him wide on the right. So what we're going to do, take the shooting away, leave the passing as it is, take a bunch off his dribbling, see how high we can get our speed. Can we get to the 80 mark? Almost. Uh, we'll nick another one from dribbling. Yeah, we're going to do that. So as a right winger, what you're going to be looking at, if you're playing wide right, you're going to want to use this guy as a kind of Beckham style winger, not relying on his pace, not relying on him dribbling and skilling his way past defenders, but just being tidy on the ball, decent enough pace, great balance, but most importantly, excellent end product. He's got that one touch pass and through passing, but he's got pinpoint crossing as well. 88 for lofted pass. If you get that game plan boost, boom, 90 lofted pass, 81 curl, 93 kicking power. This guy's crossing is going to be absolutely tip top. He's going to have superb crossing. So if you like this kind of old school, you know, traditional right winger, putting crosses in with his right foot from the right flank, bearing in mind he's not got electric pace, but like I say, you'd be using him like a, a kind of Beckham style right winger. I think he could be fantastic. You know, he's very tidy on the ball, but that crossing is going to be absolutely top level. So you've got three ways you can use this guy. I think as an attacking midfielder, excellent. Wide left could be very effective, but wide right as well could be a really, really potent right winger. So... This for me, obviously it's the highest rated player in the, in the pack. He goes to 96, the next highest. I think Canate and Hoyland go to 94. So statistically best player in the pack, but I think this is the, this is probably the best value player in the pack regardless of the stats. Just the fact that he could be so effective wide left as an attack midfielder, but wide right as well. I think this is a really, really good card. So there you go. I think on the whole, it's a pretty good selection to be honest. Um, as I mentioned, if I spin this pack, I'm looking at Eze. I'm looking at Tracer as well. I think those two are like really fun cards. I think Madison could be a really, really valuable card. Canate, really good centre back. Hoyland for a lot of people, maybe not for everyone, but for a lot of people could be effective striker. Kovacic, in my opinion, is an attacking midfielder and could be a really, really effective one if you're giving through passing. Outside of that, Bowen, Dinia, Veltman, Sangare is pretty good. There's some decent players elsewhere in the pack. Solid keeper and Sanchez as well. But yeah, you've got a whole bunch of players in there that I think are pretty pretty good. So not the most amazing pack we've ever had, but I think it's a pretty good one. And personally, I'm going to spin it and I'm hoping for Eze or Tracer. But yeah, there you go. Hopefully you found that interesting. As I mentioned earlier, I will be putting out um, the Italian League. What am I doing? There you go. The Italian League and Spanish League packs. I'll be doing reviews for those two, hopefully over the course of this week. I don't expect the Player of the Week pack on Thursday because I don't think we're getting a proper live update. They've already put the, the upcoming packs into the database. So I expect on Thursday it'll be one of those second chance packs where we get a big selection of Player of the Week pack uh, cards from previous Player of the Week packs. Uh, it'll be one of those second chance ones I expect. So that's my prediction anyway, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, like I say, keep your eyes peeled for the Spanish and Italian League reviews. I'll be putting those out this week. And hopefully you found this video useful. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.